Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. It is Monday morning, coming back after a long two and a half day weekend. Hope everybody had a safe uh, and as good of a holiday as you can. Um, a lot of us did Zoom and FaceTime uh, with family. Hopefully you got to speak to your family, if not maybe a small gathering. So now we're back. Now we're back to, uh, to an amazing finish to an amazing month of trading. This has been a month of uh, volatility. It's been a month of bullish price action. It's been a month of easy to identify sector and industry group rotation. We've had a good month of trading after kind of getting mentally beat up a little bit in September and October with a lot of which, which we discussed. We pulled back our aggressiveness. We took what was available. The election was going into November. So October had some indecision. November, the beginning of the election, uh, and the overall market, and especially the big tech stocks, have not really moved that much. Uh, Tesla exploded. I don't know if you'd necessarily call that a tech stock, but definitely one of those market stocks that we watch all the time. Did finally explode when it had the announcement that it was going into the S&P 500. We had two amazing swing trades in that stock. Uh, again, the electric vehicle stocks this month were just... I don't dare I say off the charts, great. <laughs> uh, and now they, you know, earnings are out. Maybe some of that's priced in a little bit. We're still watching them, still absolutely day trading them. Today we have a little bit of a mix. The market's had a really nice run this month, last trading day of the month. Uh, and now we're seeing a little bit of a pullback in some of these stocks that were very strong, which is awesome because they were getting a little bit frothy, getting to a point where the reward potential uh, did not make sense. Uh, and now it does. Some of them, some of them are just breaking out after going sideways for a while. We're going to take a look at those today. Some of them have pulled back uh, for two or three days now. And again, a lot of that was lighter volume um, on Wednesday and a half a day on Friday. Uh, but it is what it is. We, we're now increasing the distance to potential profitable areas, uh, which is great. So some of these stocks that closed weak, we're going to look for a test of yesterday's low or to find a new uh, entry to look for a new swing trade long. If they're breaking out, we're going to probably wait for them to go well bid one more day to prove the breakout because uh, the futures are actually trading a little bit lower right now. Not a big deal expected with how strong we've been. Um, however, on those breakouts, I just want to say this very clearly so that everybody has uh, conviction and a solid game plan. Some of these trades when the market's pulling back, you're seeing them break out and they're just kind of like barely breaking through the, the resistance or barely breaking through yesterday's high. And that's where a lot of buy stops get triggered and it goes through by a dime or a nickel or a quarter uh, and then reverses pretty quickly. The conservative play here, the trade to wait for a little bit of confirmation is even letting today finish, let that breakout prove that it's going to go well bid outside of the breakout level. So if this is the breakout level, and the first time it breaks out, that's not enough. We wanna to see today follow through where we get a higher high, a higher low, and it closes near the highs, and then you end up buying on Tuesday because now you have that confirmation. If you buy the first time it breaks out and the market's going down, the odds are that it's gonna, it's gonna um, hit that level, roll over and take you out. So if it follows through, great, we'll get involved tomorrow. If it's the first time getting through there and you want to take the trade, be smart with the market going down a little bit this morning and manage your risk appropriately, which simply means that you're going to reduce your initial share size on the first time it breaks out. Uh, and then if it follows through, awesome. You simply add more shares. If it doesn't, it pulls back. You're not really getting hurt that much because you had the right share size for that type of entry. So we're going to actually take a look at some stocks. First, we'll start out with um, uh, looking at the future. Seeing that just pulled back just recently, like within the last uh, couple of hours. Uh, and then we're going to set up some ideas uh, to trade on the long side today. So let's head on over to the uh, charts. And we're going to actually start out with, uh, after we look at the futures, you can see here where, um, where the SPY just pulled back right now. Excuse me, not the SPY, the, uh, the e minis just pulled back. Uh, not really a monster down day. I, I mean, look, we had a lot of time over the weekend, some profit taking. If we take a look at the SPY on the daily chart, you know, you always need to put pullbacks in perspective. And if you see where we are, we're kind of like literally sitting here at all time highs. Uh, so it's not a big deal to pull back a little bit. Honestly, it's, it's actually healthy. Um, a lot of the indecision seems to be working its way out of the market, which is great. So if we pause a little bit here before we see another bullish run, not the worst thing in the world. So that, again, that means you need to be on top of sector specific stuff, industry specific stuff. Again, we went from solars to electric vehicles to energy stocks. And now we're going to take a look at some other individual trades. The reason I like PLTR today is that it is now... Uh, pulling back enough after last week. And again, it looks like it's only $1.29 on Friday, but really it hit 33 and a half or somewhere in that area. Yeah, 33 and a half and pulled back to 26. Let's just say 26. 
So that's an eight and a half dollar pullback. That's a pretty good pullback. So now the stock has paused, pulled back, and now we're looking to initiate a new long here in this stock uh, with the appropriate risk potential. So I like PLTR on the pullback today. Uh, work, if you did not see the news last week, the work exploded uh, because of potential talks between Slack and Salesforce, uh, stock symbol for Salesforce is CRM. Uh, what's interesting about this now, and I want to make this clear, you're trading the news. The catalyst here is trading the news, which means that you need to uh, kind of relieve yourself from the order flow aspect of it and just jump full on into tape reading mode. Uh, we love the candlestick that paused on Friday. As long as that catalyst remains on the board, we're going to look to actively trade this stock. I am not looking to build a big position. If you look back here a little bit, uh, 34 was a monster level of resistance once, twice, three times, four times, and it couldn't even get up here a fifth time. Uh, and now it just exploded. So this is the real risk if you're looking to hold this a little longer on a close below 34. And we're up here around 39 and change. So that's a $5 risk in this stock. Now, if you think there's a lot more involved, a lot more left in the trade to the upside, you can risk that much. Uh, but you really don't need to because you're really just risking Friday's price action which kind of puts it in perspective. So it's one of those trades where it needs to be on your watch list to actively trade, to read the tape, to know your significantly levels and confidently trade it while it's active. Uh, but if that news story changes, you absolutely need to be on top of that. You need to have this with stops uh, because you could be looking at a different stock while you're in it and the stock pulls back without you knowing it because the news changed. You need to have your stops in the market. The reason I'm bringing that up is that it is a different catalyst than just trading the charts. You are now reading the tape on a news catalyst. And if that story changes, if the catalyst changes, you want to make sure that you have protective stops in the market so that you don't get uh, hit and this thing goes all the way back down to where it started. So I don't know if it's going to, but that's just good trade management. Uh, NVAX, again, exploded last week. Some positive news out. Uh, it's trading a little bit lower again this morning, but here's the thing. The market's got the market's attention. A lot of these stocks have the market's attention. I'm not holding them overnight, but they are making for tremendous uh, day trading stocks right now. It's something that's super important right now, and we mentioned this over and over last week in the boot camp, is when a stock only has a couple of days worth of buying, you're literally just trading on that shorter time frame. Big money has not committed longer term positions. They could be over time, but the time has not played itself out yet. So when you're trading these explosions of one or two days, you have to realize that you don't have a lot of order flow behind you. So the order flow is kind of that wind behind your sales that pushes a stock and, and gives you those trades to hold during a minor pullback because there, there's smart money allocation to that and it's looking to build it over time or it has started to build it over time. Two days is not a lot of time. So that means you need to manage your share size appropriately and either build it as it moves in your favor if you plan to hold this longer time, uh, longer term, but you absolutely need to recognize there's not a lot of money committed to that idea yet, which means that you need to work those orders. So I still like this despite the lower opening because there's a tension on it right now. Etsy has a really clean breakout today. We're gonna to be keeping an eye on this. This is, this is the one that we were talking about where it's the first time it broke through. So you really wanna see the stock go well bid today. As a conservative entry, if you really like the trade, you can get involved now, but then you're talking about risking back down to the 150 level, which is the breakout level. Uh, CGC, again, this sector is picking up a little bit recently. So you got a nice push and a pause, a push and a pause, and another push. And Friday, uh, excuse me, Friday was the optimal entry. Today would be the second optimal entry. I still like the stock long. I think it has some more room to go. I love the fact that it paused after the bullish gap. Net is one that's been trying a lot of traders' patience, uh, especially in the boot camp. You can see we had this really nice bullish gap looking to get aggressive, didn't move for about two weeks. Now woke up, we're keeping an eye on that one as well. CSIQ seems to be one of the, um, one of the solar stocks that is actually now breaking out. ENPH is another one that's been up in that area. Uh, JKS and RUN have not performed the same. Well, RUN had a nice run recently. Uh, but it looks like CSIQ is the one that finally found some buying pressure. Now, again, it this is a good example here. It exploded through uh, to new highs, but it traded into a melted candle. Melted candle, small body means indecision. This is a good example here. It would be conservative play. We wait for the stock to close well bid. CRSR pulled back dramatically. I love this stock as a buying opportunity today. I was actually hoping for a lower opening. So I really want to look to bid uh, Friday's O as support. But either way, I'm looking for this one today too. Uh, FANG, a couple of energy stocks had a really good 
clean bull flag at resistance, which really just sets up a nice new trade to the long side. SFIX, Stitch Bits actually had a breakout as well. Friday was the optimal entry again. So we're gonna take a look at that one today. Chewy.com, Chewy Inc. Again, very similar to what we just looked at in Etsy. Breaking out, very close to a breakout. It's the first time it's breaking out. Do you buy the first breakout? Do you be a little more conservative, wait for well bid? You can make that decision for yourself, but we're finding some good ideas uh, that are trading well relative to the market. And Fubo TV is one that's been in the community for a while. I haven't traded it, uh, but I really do like the price action where the candles are starting to expand. Uh, it's getting into uh, this area now where uh, the volatility and the consistency from day to day is starting to match. So you can see we're not seeing all of these melted candles anymore. You can see that slowly there has been institutional activity showing these energy candlesticks. And now we're looking for some follow through uh, as well. I think I like this one over 28. You get a lot of questions about some of the, you know, the common stocks that are, are the, the popular stocks. Apple hasn't moved at all. Literally nothing. Facebook actually is close to a sell short uh, on the weekly charts last week, really also in a trading range. Microsoft as well. So again, this is where your money goes to die when you continue to trade the stocks over and over again that are not setting up as tradable opportunities. If you're smart, you pull back, you find other ideas. Hopefully we're giving you some good ideas uh, and you only get involved in the ones that are moving at that moment where they have the market's attention. So we have a pretty good list of stocks today. It's, um, it's interesting. We have breakouts that we want to get confirmation that they break out and they actually feel more comfortable trading the strong stocks that have pulled back recently uh, because they've already given us the pause and hopefully give us some really good opportunities to manage risk and then look for new highs that they just push back from. So energy stocks have paused for a few days. They still look good. Last week, the solar stocks didn't have order flow, but they were active. Uh, and you can see CSIQ and ENPH actually reaching new levels. So you're going to have to put your overalls on right now and uh, dig in with us, find some good opportunities because uh, we're going to get a little bit of a pullback. So we're probably going to be stock specific, sector specific, industry group specific today to make money uh, while the market kind of gets its footing. So have a great day, everybody. Subscribe to the channel. That would really mean a lot to me. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, read down in the description about how to learn more. And if you have any questions, also leave a comment below the video. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.